Okay, yep. Hi everyone, I'm with Gary Johnston today, who has uh, just finished his neurocom and psychonutrition course in uh, in uh, Coventry, actually, we are, aren't we? We're in yeah, Coventry. In Coventry, in sunny in Coventry. The UK. Yes, yes. And you're doing this tour around and about with Joan at the moment, doing this whole um, neurocom and psychonutrition. Mm -hmm. Now, psychonutrition for some people is an alien concept. It is. Because it's you go to a doctor, you go to a psychologist. So tell me a little bit about psychonutrition. Well, I guess the difference between psychonutrition and the, and the typical medical model, if you like, is that psychonutrition looks at the causes of ailments. Now, we specialise in um, mental health, and there is a very large component of nutrition and malnutrition in the background of most mental illnesses. And I'm talking about anxiety disorders, depression, and even the more serious ones all the way through the schizophrenia. This is alien. Most doctors will not even go there. They won't even tell you there's any links or anything. So, you know, <laughs> what's your work like? I mean, how, well, how do you communicate a message? Typically, well, sometimes it's very hard to get through. Um, there is a, a larger number of uh, psychiatrists around the world now understanding the psychonutritional model. Knowing, and, and they really do know, and the, the drug companies are not going to like me saying this, but you know, mental health problems are not caused by lack of prescription drugs like antidepressants and, and antipsychotics. There is an underlying cause that contributes to a failure in the nervous system, which then affects the emotional behaviour of people. So uh, what we look at is the actual underlying cause and in our society with the foods that we're eating and the poor quality of the foods we're eating but also high levels of things like sugar and wheat and dairy, which are the staples now. All of those things actually cause problems in okay. causing malnutrition. And when you have malnutrition, then you have problems with the nervous system. You say these foods that we're eating, these staples, are causing malnutrition. Absolutely. So can you tell us how? That's well, for instance, um, one of the major foods groups that we're now eating in modern society are the grains, which were introduced quite late in, in human society. We're talking wheat, barley, oats. Wheat, barley, oats and rye right. are typically the staples. All of them contain gluten. Now, we're all sensitive, well, we're, we're all, uh, we, we cannot process gluten in the system. It's quite toxic in the system and some people are more sensitive than others. What gluten does is actually pass through the uh, barrier of the, through the wall of the gut, actually destroys the lining of the small intestine eventually. And that does a number of things. A, it allows a lot of toxins to get into the system, so we have toxic reaction and immune reactions. But by um, removing a large number of cells in the lining of the small intestine, it actually stops us producing some of the neurotransmitters like uh, serotonin, which is important. 80% of serotonin, which is a, a mood-producing neurotransmitter, is made in the lining of the gut. So when that's destroyed, you can't actually manufacture serotonin. Um, in addition to that, it also affects the absorption of nutrients. So even if you were getting really good nutrition, you know, um, organic foods and, and really good healthy nutrition, the gut can't actually absorb it. It can't process it, can't absorb it. And it allows toxins through the system as well. So that's one component of it in terms of it's, it's basically an allergic reaction to gluten or components of gluten. Can I interrupt you there? Because I went to a doctor once many years ago having been tested for gluten and dairy, mm -hmm. which I was intolerant to. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, oh, I don't believe any of these tests. There's too <laughs> many come back that you're, you're you know, intolerant with gluten and, uh, mm -hmm. and dairy. I think it's all hocus pocus. What? You know, what, would you, what would you say to them? Um, I'd better be very careful about my language. Um, yeah, I'd basically say change the doctor. Because, you, change you know, the doctor? Change the doctor. But look, I can understand their perspective because they really are... Um, there's very, I, I don't know if it's the same in this country, but in Australia there's very little nutritional element in medicine. In, they're not trained in, in nutrition. The they same. don't understand it. They don't understand that uh, the reason for disease is actually poor nutrition. If you don't provide the body with the cellular structure and the, the nutrients it requires to build and to maintain health, it'll fall apart. Mm -hmm. And we've known for a long time this. Uh, in terms of mental health, it's, it's, we've known the connection between foods and malnutrition and toxicities to mental health. We've known some of that for over 100 years now. And it's the body of evidence in that direction in the last 50 years has grown enormously. It's, it's just 
overwhelming. But the traditional models, models are still having trouble with simulating that into the management model. I wonder if you could tell us, say for example somebody watching might have an anxiety issue of okay. some sort or another, and they might be on a standard balanced diet. Okay. Yeah, a good healthy diet. A good healthy yeah. diet, okay. What would you advise them? Um, it depends on the kind of anxiety and there's a whole range of things that are involved. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not I mean, just diet. Not yeah. that anyone should take this for you know, no, no, gospel or anything, no. but I mean, just a general rule of thumb, what would you say? Um, typically what will happen with most people is that they'll try and treat that through psychotherapies, but if you don't take the underlying biochemistry out as an issue, then the psychotherapies are a waste of time. So in that situation, I'd be looking at what foods were being eaten, and typically what we see uh, across a broad spectrum of populations, very high sugar levels, which cause enormous amount of damage to the system. Uh, usually high levels of junk food, which is wheat and, and dairy and sugars. Um, and in some cases, there are some toxic elements involved as well that we look at. And we run symptomology tests to have a look at that. And that gives us a pretty good idea of what's going on. Now, in a situation like that, with a change in diet and certain levels of nutrient supplements, which is not a lot, for a generalised anxiety disorder and some of the lower end um, disorders, you will feel the difference typically within a week to a week and a half, two weeks. Even if the problem's Seriously. been around long, a long time? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It'll, unless it's a serious um, gut malabsorption problem like celiac disease or something like that, which takes longer to affect. But in most anxiety disorders, you will feel the difference dramatically within about a week, week and a half, two weeks. I mean, this is a really radical message. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one that I don't think many uh, therapists, let alone doctors, really understand. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know how much acceptance you're met with with this message. Pretty well. Okay. Um, now pretty well. You know, when we first started the work in this area probably 25 years ago, it was like um, pushing it uphill. And, uh, it was very, very difficult. But we're now talking to groups of uh, psychologists. Um, uh, there's about 3% of psychiatrists around the world now use an orphan molecular psychonutritional model um, to fix the problem as opposed to put a band-aid on, which is what the drugs do. You, know, you can stick band-aid over a festering sore, basically. So the awareness is getting there, and uh, I actually had one of the most resistant psychiatrists, I reckon, in the world. Was, um, presenting to not naming any names. Not yes. naming any names. Um, who um, actually said at the end of a presentation, you know, we now think that nutrition has something to do with mental health. So it's getting there and that's that's one of the most resistant people on the planet. So I think in another ten years it'll become stable in, uh, in uh, medical health and mental health. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to cut us short there because sure. we could go on forever. It's a topic that we're both really quite passionate about and I can see it in you. Obviously, you live and breathe it. So Brilliant. thank you very much. And I think Gary's details are also on the Golding Institute. Golding Institute, yes. Um, yeah. um, you can access all my stuff through there or through uh, neurocom.org. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much.